Hey there, Bruce, and welcome to the demo for Amnia 28, which uh, Questline was kind enough to link in the Discord server. Uh, this is only the demo at this stage. It is on itch.io, and I'll put a link in the description if you want to go check it out for yourself. I don't know how long the demo is going to be, but let's get into it, shall we? Because it looks pretty spoopy. <laughs> pretty spoopy indeed, actually. Uh, I assume it's already in English now. Gonna turn the sound right down. And let's get into it. I really don't know what to expect from this because I haven't really read up on it, but it looks interesting. The world blurred into a single bright spot. As if the artist had spilled water on the canvas, turning it into a sloppy blot. I was thrown to the side, my shoulder slammed into something hard and there was a pang of pain. And then another blow. Just a moment later everything stopped. The dead silence was more frightening than any rumble. I instinctively jerked away from the unknown threat. It didn't work. Something was holding me back. <sighs> Seatbelt. Struggling I grabbed the plastic holder. A muffled click marked freedom. Now away from the unbearable confinement. The car door fidgeted, but it finally gave way and swung open sharply, pulling me into the cool air. Well, a car accident's a great way to start things off. My thoughts were getting mixed up. What happened? Car accident? Where was I going? Where am I? Looks like a forest. Yes, without a doubt. Rows of bare trees, damp moss under the palms of my hands, and the unaccustomedly fresh air filled with dampness and the scent of dead leaves. What exactly happened? I strained my memory. Morning. Everything has started this morning. Right. It was raining. Unpleasant autumn drizzle that makes you freeze to the bone. The taxi pulled up outside a bookshop, where recent bestsellers were on display. There was a fresh novel this morning, a slim book with an enticing cover called what are you running away from? The taxi has been waiting for about five minutes, but I didn't want to get in. I felt a bit sick at heart. In a futile attempt to pull myself together, I slipped my hand into my pocket and clutched a folded sheet of paper. An invitation letter. Something... Someone bothered to plant it in my mailbox. It was scary, but on the other hand, its contents have been bothering me for a couple of weeks now. No matter how many sleeping pills I took, I couldn't sleep. I sat down resolutely on the cold seat. Let's get moving, please. We were silent the entire way. I'd be looking at the old broken highway through the window. The radio kept losing signal. Rain was getting heavier. Anxiety in my mind was mixing with impatience and I had to solve the mystery of this dark message soon. Soon. Just a little more. Just a li- The world blurred into a single bright spot. My stomach slid down somewhere, air trapped in my throat. And then it was over. Stopped and plunged into darkness. It hurts. That's how it happened. Taxi. Crash. Forest. The chain of events has been successfully established. Definitely not my lucky day. <sighs> Thankfully the rain has stopped. Profile information has been updated. How are you? Someone's voice sounded from above. A loud sound in the middle of the forest silence made my heart do a triple somersault. Does it hurt somewhere? I bruised my shoulder. Nothing serious. That's for me to decide. Can you lift your hand? Yeah, I can. My shoulder ached a little, but I didn't even flinch. Alright, that'll do for now. Do you understand who and where you are? Yeah, quiet. Clap your hands. Huh? Fine. I obediently complied with their request. Not bad. Looks like it's actually nothing serious. Did we have a car accident? Vince? Yes. Right. Vincent. We're friends. Rode together. I tried to clear up the crash, clashing thoughts, but my mind was still a bit foggy. Meanwhile, the man's face brightened. Apparently, he was pleased that I was able to string words together to a sensible sentence. Others are more or less fine as well. Thank God. Huh? What did he just say? Others? Right. We all rode together, the five of us, to Amnia. Need a hand? No, I'm good, thanks. Even though my legs felt weak, I stood up without much difficulty. The shock had finally passed. All that remained was anxiety for my friends. What if they were less fortunate than me? What? No, no. Wait, what's going on? 
Lee? Vincent darkened after seeing my face twist. But there's... There? No taxi, right? Taxi? It was a battered silver-coloured jeep on the forest moss. Its windscreen had several cracks resembling a spider's web. The car's sides, roof, wheels, they were all covered with mud and grass clippings. Taxi has disappeared, turned into a jeep. What the... Vince kept looking at me with an unclear expression, a mixture of anxiety, worry, and some uncertain feeling. Are you really alright? I... I saw a dream. A dream? I imagined... Nah, no matter. Maybe I just bumped my head. Concussion is no joke. Come here. Vincent scrutinized my pupils. Does your head hurt? Do you have nausea? Can you walk? I took a few steady steps. My head wasn't spinning. Ill-fated shoulder was the only thing that hurt. Answer my question. How many girlfriends does Joshini have? Girlfriends? Joshini? No way, that's a trick question. Finally, Vincent laughed. I joined him even though our laughter was rather a way to release tension than genuine joy. Well, your speech is coherent, and you're thinking straight. Good enough. Now I need to tend to the others as well. How reassuring. Vince? Lee? Get me out of here now. Be careful, Deb. A nightmare is just... It's just some friggin' nightmare. Hell. Knows what. Lee, you okay? Yeah, I'm good. What about you? Deborah snorted nervously and crossed her arms in an attempt to calm down. All sudden good. We aren't even there yet. And it's already an adventure. I think it'll be fun. Adventure? Deborah glanced at her friend with exactly how nutsy her expression, then sighed. What the hell happened? I... The car didn't listen and we drove down the slope. That's so. Wonderful. We almost kissed a tree. What the heck, Vince? The road is downright terrible. Nuh-uh. Meanwhile, the last member of our group got out of the car. Cordelia. She was staggering a little and looked lost. How do you feel? I uh, don't under... Cordelia's skin took on an unlikely white hue, but she took a deep breath and gave us a wry smile. Frightened. Very. We As we all are. Does it hurt somewhere? No, but I don't... Why am I... <sighs> she looked rather confused than startled. I'll rest a bit, okay? Of course. Vincent inspected the young woman's pupils, asked her several questions, and having received satisfactory answered, answers, helped her into the car's back seat. Cordelia took a deep breath and closed her eyes. Your car won't blow up, right? Don't worry, cars don't blow up just like that. I sure hope so. And what do we do now? What's the plan, Commander? You two, stand forward for examination. The last thing I need is companions in with concussion. Of course, Doctor. I'm not a doctor yet. Vincent repeated the same routine on Deborah and Joshini, inspecting pupils and checking for visible damage. Then asked if they had any complaints like dizziness or nausea. Thankfully, some bruises and fright was all they've got. Well, are we alive? Dead? I'm not sure anymore. 20% are in shock. 80 within normal limits. But we'll go through extra examination later, just to be safe. Sure thing, we're counting on you. For some time, the forest plunged into silence, interrupted by occasional wind noise. Although I was worried about my friend's well-being, my thoughts finally calmed down. Naturally, there was no taxi. We were driving Vince's jeep. Road was bad as heck and the car flew into a ravine. Our destination was Amnia, old idle hotel where we planned to spend a week attending psychology lectures. How is the old hotel connected to our studies? That's the place where famous psychology prof the famous psychology professor lives. He agreed to train us, for which we are very grateful. By completing this course, we would have been able to obtain considerable credit, which would have had notice a noticeable effect on our final grade at the end of the semester. And it also counts as a practical assignment in psychology. All the benefits. All this left is to get there in one piece. Who could have guessed that we'd run into such trouble? I wonder, what was this taxi dream about? No matter. I'll talk with Vince about concussion symptoms later. Now for the main task, getting out of the ravine. Let's call for the tow truck. Good call. No signal. God effing damn it. Muttering curses under her breath, she dialed the number and put the phone to her ear. At the same moment, her face darkened completely. For heck's sake, it's not like we're in a desert. Not surprisingly. I'll climb higher, in case there's a connection. Jashini smiled and easily climbed up the earth slope. What a stunt man. Definitely not lacking strength. Maybe he'll get a car out of here as well. I highly doubt it. 
I checked my phone just in case. Signal scale was empty. Jashini returned immediately, out and in. Well, no use. Signal does, still doesn't get here. Damn. What about cars? Did you see anyone? Regretfully, no. I don't think we'll get that lucky. Why? We were driving on an old wrecked road. Barely anyone uses it nowadays. With the new highway requiring only a small detour. Aren't we goddamn lucky? No worries, Deb. I've been in worse situations. We need to think straight. We can't call for help and pass the buys is clearly not an option. Suggestions? With a nonchalant smile, Jashini walked up, the, up to the jeep and pulled out a folded paper map from the glove compartment. On it was a scarlet circle, the destination of our journey. The circle was in the middle of an endless green field, the forest split into two parts by a road line. Even so, it looked like a faint thread. It's, it's a wonder it was portrayed at all. No living places from where we were for miles, not a distance we could cover by foot. After studying the map, Jashini nodded in satisfaction. Good, we're close to Amnia. Now hold on a minute, do you suggest... to walk? Aren't you a risky fella? Why not call wait for help? We'll sit in the car, get warm, Cordelia will also get better. I'm afraid we won't have to wait too long. I'm afraid we'd have to wait too long. We'll spend all gasoline on heating. Don't worry Deb, I'll definitely lead us to Amnia. Judging by how much gasoline we spent on the road, it should be nearby. Then let's go before it gets dark. We won't be easy to notice in the ravine even if we turn on the headlights. Best to keep moving, otherwise we'll wait for the whole night and freeze completely. Deborah made a disgruntled face but remained sullen accepting the plan. Maybe we'll meet help along the road. We started packing. Vince had pulled out the first aid kit, grinning with satisfaction that it hadn't come in handy. The others reached for their bags. We were ready to go, but still hesitated. Even Jashini, who had already climbed up the road several times to check the connection, stood still. Cordelia, are you okay? Young woman's breath had evened out, but her face still resembled the mask of a pale ghost. Better. She got out of the car and immediately staggered. Oh. Dizzy? Nauseous? No, all good. Cordelia smiled cheerfully but got tangled up in her skirt and almost fell over again. I see. We'll work as a vehicle. Naturally, you're the one who totaled, totaled the first. Vincent ignored Deborah's sarcastic comment and helped Cordelia onto his back. Thanks. Her exhausted look made me worried sick. Jashini carefully put a hand on my shoulder. Are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. We've got a rather difficult road ahead. Will you manage? Of course. Then off we go. Do me a favour. No drill songs. The scenery on the road did little to inspire us. Everywhere you looked, there was a strip of tall trees, almost devoid of leaves, potholes, broken asphalt, and puddles lurked underfoot. Strong will, wind was chill, chilling to the bone. Suppressing, sullen, unpleasant weather, late autumn. Mood wouldn't have been so gloomy if the sun was out. Ugh. Where to go now? Which side? Look, the tyre tracks. We'd be moving from out there to over there. Simple. It looked like we were moving on an endless, looped road without beginning or end. Road signs which showed how far we were from the city were the only comfort. Only they made it clear we aren't moving in circles. Jashini set such a fast pace that neither of us could keep up. Shin, too fast. Jashini slowed down immediately. Sorry, a habit of mine. Want me to carry someone? I've got enough strength. Deborah and I exchanged looks. Um, no thanks. That's right, you're our secret weapon. Come again? If we fall, you'll keep moving and get help. I don't think it'll come to this. Debs, you okay? Huh? What? Not quite. My shoes aren't suited for such adventures. We'll definitely get somewhere soon. I'll hold you to that. A bit more and someone will actually have to carry me. Tremble, Jashini. Like I said, not an issue. That's what you say now. Deborah was joking, trying to keep the spirit up. We got into a nasty mess, but it could have been worse. Far worse, trust me. The highway stretched to infinity. We hardly covered much distance, but thanks to the difficult road, bad weather and general stress after the accident, the three the, the minutes were dragging on like hours. As we kept going forward, encountering nothing resembling human presence, fear and despair grew in us. And then Cordelia spoke. I'll go on my own. Thanks, Vince. Vincent lowered the young woman to the ground and rolled his shoulders, stretching them after a long strain. For some time, Cordelia kept silent and then forced a smile. That was quite a scare I got. How do you feel? She finally relaxed and smiled genuinely. Pretty good. 
I don't want to be a burden any longer. We'll walk on my own. Onwards. Come on, Giacchini. With his worst things happened, it's much more of a hassle. I missed everything. Where are we? How far to Abnia? Looks like the ability to think straight has returned to Cordelia. Everyone, including me, made a sigh of relief. We don't know exactly, but Giacchini is leading us using a compass and map, so we'll probably get there soon. So... no one here but... no one here at all but us? We haven't met anyone yet. Oh. Not to worry. The important thing is that no one got hurt, right? With every second Cordelia looked more like herself. That was certainly good. We kept moving. The road hadn't changed. Cordelia was moving slowly and Deborah had slowed down visibly. Looks like they were both at their limit. So everyone rejoiced when a fork in the road appeared ahead. A small path diverged to the side from the highway, dissolving into the shade of trees. Nevertheless, it was wide enough for a car. I'm glad we finally have options. Nah, -uh, this isn't it. Isn't it dangerous to tread into a thicket? This trail it leads to hell, knows where. Hold on, take a closer look. All right, tire tracks. Two distinct ruts stood out against the uneven soil covered with fallen leaves. Now that's a pathfinder. The map says we have to take a turn nearby. Rest a bit. I'll go check. Very well. Let's do so. Be careful. And stay close enough that we'd hear if you call for help. Don't worry, I always get lucky. <laughs> Famous last words. Jashini waved goodbye and headed down the road with a brisk pace. Like a tourist on hiking, enjoying nature and having fun. The sun was almost down and it got considerably cooler. We'd been waiting anxiously. The silence was getting on our nerves. But losing heart was the last thing we could do, so I smiled at my companions and they responded with the same strange smile. I even tried to joke. Would Jashini be able to fight back a pack of wolves? I think he would. Yeah, jokes in extreme situations are not my forte. We've been waiting for at least 20 minutes now. Suddenly Deborah jumped to her feet. I hear something. Motor sounds. A car. Someone's coming. Finally. Our mood has immediately risen to good level. We kept st staring into the distance, but the road remained deserted. The sound was getting closer, but to everyone's surprise, it was coming from the bestial trail Jashini left on. At last, we saw the source of the sound. A battered red SUV was climbing out of the thicket. Apparently, it is in its first rodeo on the rough roads of this area. There you are. The car pulled onto the highway and stopped before us. The driver's door swung open and a short man jumped out, both feet on a onto a puddle. Eli. He was one, the one pers who persuaded the professor to help us with assignment and set up the meeting. Eli's been studying psychology, with the professor being akin to his tutor, but not for free. Eli had to carry out his mental assignments, notably travelling between Amnia and the city, bringing groceries, literature, sorting papers, and the list went on. In any case, Eli told stories about harsh, impossible tasks he was getting, which would have definitely costed me and mortal their life and soul. Jashini explained everything when I met him, and here I was wondering what had taken you so long. We made a bet that Deborah spent hours going through her wardrobe. But that's how it turned out. I'm really sorry. I tried to reach you, but to no avail. The connection here isn't worth Jack. You don't say. It's like the morning after the apocalypse with no one around to recap the fruits. To reap the fruits. Come on. You've had a bit of bad luck. No point in dilly-dallying. Let's go. I'll get you to the house. Jashini's probably relaxing there by now. Food, soft beds, warmth and comfort. The best treat after a harsh adventure awaits you. You know... Yunia has almost gone crazy because of you. I've never seen her like this before. Cordelia froze. Her eyes were widened, mouth slightly open. She was standing there unmoving, until I gently touched her arm. Something the matter? N no, nothing. Well, everyone ready? Off we go. Eli easily turned the car around and drove us into the thicket. They're using a lot of different uh, transitions there. He kept talking with joy for the entire road, not once taking a break. That would be so great, fresh air, no annoying civilization blessings, pure beauty. I'll grab your stuff later. It's in the trunk of your jeep, right, Vince? Great. I'll also see if I can get, get it up there. Hey Deborah, why so glum? Ah, I got new shoes all messy. <laughs> you knew what you were getting into. Listen, Lee, we need to go over some stuff again. Last time we didn't quite sort it out. Again, it's like some alien has replaced you near. I can't even have a good talk with her, no matter how hard I try. Cordelia, help me out. He talked and talked, easily, light-heartedly, probably trying to cheer us up, and honestly, it worked. Meaningless phrases took us word by word into a world where everything is good, right, and in its place. And pretty soon we were smiling, laughing, and seemingly forgot about the mess we were in just minutes ago. But my carefree mood dissolved the moment we got to our destination.
Jesus, look at it. The car took us straight to Amnia. I would never have guessed that this two-story building is hiding deep inside a forest thicket. Its size was striking, even if it looked shabby. An indelible impression was made, not so much by its frightening appearance, shrouded in night fog, but its aura of mystery and detachment from the outside world. The hotel peeped out of the grey shroud like a wild animal cautiously welcoming guests into its lair. Even the light on the terrace looked unfriendly, resembling a bait in the beast's mouth. A dog's bark sounded nearby. Professor's pets? Eli has stopped beauty at the beginning of the stone path. Well, here we are. I'm going to give you all a little tour. We're a bit tired now. How about tomorrow? A bit. I'm about to drop dead. But I'll try my best to get to the warm bed. Fear not. I'm no monster. Would you please follow me, ladies and gentlemen? Nobody objected, especially since Eli had successfully mimicked a well-trained butler. Everyone except Eli made a sigh of relief once we got inside, in the safety of walls and roof. I looked cur curiously around the room that served as the lobby. There was no doubt that we were in a hotel. There was a counter on the left. It looked rather lonely, without staff behind it. To the right there was a wardrobe. Nevertheless, Amnia's lobby bore little resemblance to the common light rooms with modern comforts. The room had a pressing aura that was causing an involuntary shiver. Unfamiliar smells stirred the imagination, creating illusions of another world. The tattered wallpaper, antique furniture, even the colour scheme made the heart sink with the feeling of the hotel's old hotel's grandeur. One would have looked at the, with the same respect at the old powerful lady for whom people around are just unintelligent children deprived of even a grain of her wisdom. You can leave outerwear in the wardrobe. There are also indoor shoes for you there. We have a rule there. No dirt on the floor. Otherwise, some certain scares a lot would come for you with enough rage to shake this planet. <laughs> I approve of this rule. One shouldn't stain the carpets, especially since there is no cleaning staff in the hotel. Changing our shoes for slightly trampled slippers, we followed our friend to the depths of Amnia. I'll be quick since y'all are tired. The rooms are on the first floor. As we agreed beforehand, you'll live in pairs. You've already talked this through. Wonderful. If you want to eat something, you'll have to go down to the dining room on the ground floor. Are you hungry? I'd rather sleep first. Same. We were moving on adrenaline the entire time. Legitimately, we ended up with a loss of energy. For a while, we won't have enough strength to even blink. No shit, I can barely speak. Alright, if you say so. But I'll make you some tea nevertheless. For all diseases and whatnot. You're cold like mushrooms in the rain, or however they say it. Thank you. Eli led us to the dining room and made us each drink a cup of... A whole cup of the tea. Delicious. A blissful warmth has immediately spread throughout my body, warming frozen insides. My body felt safe and demanded a well-deserved rest. I yawned widely. You can always find something to chew on in here. But the proper food is on the schedule. And don't enter the kitchen without urgent need. Capiche? Trust me, you better not go there. But why? Well, the rules. Don't dwell on it. Warmed up? Awesome. Off to bed now. We moved to the first floor. Eli showed us the restroom and escorted to the right rooms. Me and Deborah were to live together. Our room was rather spacious, with two beds and all the necessary furniture. It was comfortably warm inside thanks to the floor heater. Not willing to worry my head any longer, I sat on the bed. I'll have plenty of time to explore tomorrow, without the fog of fatigue surrounding me. Good night, Cordelia. See you tomorrow. Have a good sleep. You're like a ghost now. Yeah. Come on. I've already almost had my head served on a platter because you were missing. Oh, sorry, Eli. She wished us good night once more and went to her room. You need a rest as well. Worried? A doc is always a doc, huh? Huh, Vince. Aren't you exhausted yourself? First, I'm not a doctor yet. Second, I'll drop dead when I feel like it. Alrighty. As you wish. Well, off I go. Sweet dreams, and best of luck if you have some forest creature under your blanket. Deborah immediately flinched, but could not find the strength to argue. Eli used this opportunity to get away. Now seriously, how are you? Deborah hesitated to answer. Apparently she'd had some trouble choos choosing the jibe for it. Same old, tired and my legs are hitting. I'll be monitoring you tomorrow just in case. Thanks, Doc. Now I can sleep in peace. Is Cordelia alright? I'll be monitoring her with particular diligence. Phew. Then it's fine. Don't worry, you all need to get enough sleep now. No need to ask me twice. And just like that, without any undressing, Deborah crawled under the covers and instantly sn sniffled.
Vincent and I exchanged looks. We'd better follow her example. Gladly, as soon as I'm done. Don't forget to rest now. Vincent vigorously waved his hand, as if to show the excess of energy and cheerfulness in him. We wished each other good night, and he left, closing the door behind him. The old hinges creaked as if they'd not been lubricated for decades. Perhaps it was indeed so. I turned off the light and collapsed on my bed. What a busy day. I was happy that no one got hurt and we all safely reached Amnia. Tomorrow looked promising. Eli could even study the f into a, turn f study into a fun show. My drowsy mind tried to remember the details of the accident, but to no avail. I was too exhausted. Still, what was that dream about? The dream. I barely remembered it. I think it was raining. And I forgot to ask Vince whether it's fine. Not to worry. I'll have plenty of chances tomorrow. Having made up my mind, I completely disappeared into the darkness of dreams. And I'm guessing that's the end of the demo? Is that correct? Well, maybe not. It seemed like Amnia was getting to know me, cautiously, showing her inner side and monitoring my reaction to the unusual surroundings. Well, I think we'll stop that one there because we're nearly at half an hour, so we'll continue day one in the next episode, but I'm intrigued to see where this is going. Maybe we died in the car accident and this is all, we're a ghost. I don't know, we'll see. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching, Preston, I'll see you in the next one.